Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and welcome as we come together to celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. We come before the Lord knowing that at times there are parts of us that are broken and wounded and needing healing, but we know too that at times we sin and need forgiveness. Let's now Ask the Lord for what we need. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, God brought Abram outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer, three years old, a she-goat, three years old, a ram, three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these, cut them in two, and, lay, and laid each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram. And behold, a dread and great darkness fell upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, Behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land. From the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord, the Lord is, is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? The Lord, the Lord is, is my light and my salvation. O oh Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer me. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. The Lord, Lord is, is my light and my salvation. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. 
Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon or forsake me. The Lord Lord is is my light and my salvation. salvation. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. The Lord Lord is is my my light and and my salvation. salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and mark those who so walk as you have an example in us. For many of whom I have often told you and not tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power which enables him even to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in this way in the Lord, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men talked with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but kept awake. And they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he said this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my Son, my Chosen One. Listen to Him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silence and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have a friend who loves doing two things, climbing mountains and taking pictures, photography. So if you want to find him on a weekend, you will no doubt find him up a mountain somewhere with his camera. You know, mountains have a a certain mystique for human beings. Human beings, for one reason or another, are attracted to mountains. And it seems sometimes the higher they are, the better. Think of those who have summited Mount Everest, or others who do Everest and then want to go to the top of K2, those huge mountains where the conditions are at times treacherous for human beings. If you climb a mountain, even not a very high one as I tend to do, you will discover that when you get to the top of a mountain, you get an all-round view. 
the world seems to be enlarged. You, you see much further than what you normally see. You're better able to situate yourself in your surroundings. You maybe even notice the immensity of the sky. It always strikes me how much and how much more immense the sky looks when you are up a mountain. For people like my friend as well, going up a mountain is a time where he gets in touch with nature and he feels restored and renewed after the hike up and down. Now, mountains are important in the Bible as well. Because mountains throughout the scriptures are a place of encounter. Think of Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai. And now today we hear about Mount Tabor, which Luke doesn't mention, but in the other Gospels we are told Jesus goes up Mount Tabor. Think of the Mount of Olives where Jesus prays. You see, mountains are places of supernatural encounter, or in theology we would say theophanies, where God is revealed. And so when we hear that Jesus goes up a mountain, we know that something is going to happen, something important is going to happen in the biblical tradition. I want to suggest to you today that Lent is like our mountain. And I, and I want to invite you to notice how the dynamic of what happens on Mount Tabor is also playing out in our own lives as we live through the season of Lent. The first thing I want you to notice is how when one goes up a mountain, when Jesus goes up this mountain, he's away from the ordinary. Jesus leaves his ordinary daily routine to go up a mountain. He chooses, he deliberately chooses to go up this mountain. He knows that mountains are places where God is encountered in a different way, perhaps, to the ordinary of his life. It seems to me that Lent invites us to intentionally leave the ordinary routines and deliberately do something different. To go to a place where encounter is possible. To make the effort, so to speak, to facilitate an encounter with God. How will you, or how are you in this time of Lent, going to that place of encounter, that mountain that is out of the ordinary of your life. The second thing to notice is how Peter and his companions are challenged. Their thinking is challenged. And they are changed after this experience with Jesus on Mount Tabor. Peter wants to build tents. That's his first thing. Lord, let me build a booth or a tent for you. He has different ideas to what God and Jesus are doing. And so his thinking is challenged. His thinking is changed. And our thinking, if we enter into Lent intentionally, like Peter's, will be challenged and hopefully changed as we live through this season. If we really read Scripture and get familiar with Scripture, practice the disciplines of Lent, of almsgiving, of prayer, and of fasting, those things that we don't ordinarily do, our thinking too will be challenged and the way that we live will slowly start to change. I wonder if you've had a chance, we're already into the second week of Lent, to intentionally choose to live one of those core disciplines that Jesus lays before us on Ash Wednesday. Almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. Because they are the things, those are the ingredients, so to speak, that challenge 
and change our thinking. Notice the third thing that happens. A voice comes from the cloud. A voice that reveals the identity of Jesus, the Son, the Chosen One, some translations, the Beloved. It's the voice of affirmation. It's the voice of identity. It's the voice that continues to show us the mission of Jesus, because that is God's missioning voice to Jesus. I wonder what the dominant voice is in your own life at this time. The dominant voice, perhaps, in your head. Can you hear God revealing your identity? And can you believe that identity? That you are a beloved son or daughter of God. That you are chosen by God. And that God has for you too a mission in our world. Lent invites us to go that little bit deeper, to hear again this voice of God affirming us, this voice of God loving us, this voice of God giving us a mission in the world today. Sometimes we don't hear that voice because there are many other voices, some, some often contrary to that voice of God that speak around us, or that speak in our heads. What voice are you listening to? I want to invite you today to climb that mountain of Lent, to intentionally and deliberately get an all-round view of your life. Look at your broader world, your relationships. See your surroundings better than what you normally do, so that you can allow God to challenge and change you and your thinking so that you are more in tune with the Lord himself, so that you can hear that voice of affirmation, that voice of love, that voice that tells you who you really are and how you can make a contribution to our world and to God's kingdom here today. Let's now make a profession of faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father oh, Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word and God's invitation to each of us today. And so now we bring our prayers before the Lord. For ourselves, that during this time of Lent, we would intentionally seek to encounter the Lord and allow ourselves to be challenged and changed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all followers of Christ and the people of goodwill, that we would listen to the voice of God that tells us that we are all God's beloved sons and daughters, chosen by God and therefore worthy of respect and dignity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our church, political and civil leaders, 
that they would be wise and just in exercising their authority, seeking always to serve and not to be served. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are suffering at this time, for victims of violence, crime, assault, rape, abuse, racism, that they would come to hear the voice of God, calling them beloved and chosen, and in so doing, begin to find healing and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the church, as we prepare for the synod on synodality, may the voices of all God's people be heard. We pray that this may be a graced time of genuine listening so that the church can respond to the pressing needs of humanity today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In a moment of silence, we bring our own prayers before the Lord. For these we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our needs known to you. Those we speak out loud, but the prayer too that rests within the heart of each one of us. And we make these prayers with all the love that we have through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God of the Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to receive us, please, sacrifice in our faith, humble and contrite hearts. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's nature. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end. We acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bhutti, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, 
We invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.